new nation, God is in and G. Find just what you see, gain frequencies of elevation, reach your highest frequency. She's serving healing and education, uplifting and motivating. Yeah. N G, new nation goddess. Hey, yo, check this. You are now tuned in to the transcendent N G podcast with your host, Chris Walker. New episodes on wealth and wellness wisdoms. Hello, everybody. Happy Wealth and Wellness Wednesday. I am your host, Brittany Walker, also known as New Nation Goddess, and welcome to the Transcend with NNG podcast. Today is Wednesday, June 7th. You have made it to season three, episode six, Turning Knowledge into Wisdom. So we will be tackling the fifth eight frequency of elevation, which is knowledge acquisition, on this good old wealth and wellness Wednesday. So before we get started, you know I like to kick off each episode with the I am power statement, I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, and M representing manifestations. So for today, I am's power statement is I am mindful that all of the knowledge that we need to evolve is already available and I am open to accepting it. Ashe. And so there it is. I also want to give a very special shout out to my soul sister, Dr. Ashley Way, for this Read for Freedom shirt. You know how I feel about reading. You know, we've discussed in past episodes that it was illegal at one point for melanin people to read, write, or be educated as one of my ancestors and elders, Nat Turner, who you guys know as the revolt (laughs) God, okay? But he actually was an educator. He actually wanted to teach people how to read and write and to uplift people so they know, they knew what they were getting into. So I love, love, love this shirt. You can follow Dr. Ashley Wade at Read with Dr. Wade. You could definitely keep up with the both of us because we did host a workshop, New Age Medical Freedom, Um, a new uh, liberated approach to health equity at the end of April, but we will be having many more events coming up. So definitely keep up with the both of us as we aid in healing, serving, and educating our culture. So appreciate this, sis. Love, love, love it. Going to be rocking it all day long. And we're going to go ahead, instead of having a book reference for today, um, I definitely want to give a quote again coming from Uncle Malcolm, a.k.a. Malcolm X, uncle in my head, godfather in my head. (laughs) But armed with the knowledge of our past, we can we can with confidence charter a course for our future. Culture is an indispensable weapon in the freedom, the freedom struggle. We must take hold of it and forge the future with the past. Malcolm X. So taking the information, taking the gifts that our ancestors gave, giving all of that knowledge that we know from our past, how are we going to become more liberated in the future and have a society that's really meant for us? All right, guys. So, you know, I typically have a tea of the day. I was drinking Dr. Holistic Bobby uh, Price's tea last week, that parasite and tummy tea cleanse, which I'm still working on. And yes, it's still bitter, (laughs) but it is working and it's doing its job. But today I'm sipping on my moon water, full moon in Sagittarius, a strawberry full moon, releasing what no longer adds value to my life so I can welcome in the abundance of what's meant for my future. So I'm going to take a sip of this good old moon water that was charging with crystals overnight under the full moon. Mm. Ah, so refreshing. So Let's go ahead and get started for today. We're not going to hold you up much longer. We definitely just want to drop these gems for you. And that way you can take it and manifest and fester with it. Well, let me not say manifest first. Fester with the information that's coming to you and then figure out how you can manifest the life that you really want. So what is knowledge? We're going to first start with that. The definition of knowledge is facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Now, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject, and it's also the awareness or familiarity gained by an experience of a fact or situation. So again, information that you're taking in, facts, 
that you're taking in, not what society's telling you what you should do, not what people are peer pressuring you into thinking, not what people are brainwashing you into thinking, but real actual facts, information, and skills. Now, when it comes to wisdom, it is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise, <laughs> the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Now, the body of knowledge and principles that develops within a specific society or period. That last line is it for me. The body of knowledge, because we just talked about knowledge, <laughs> and principles that develops within a specific society or period. Guys, it's all about us intaking proper, legitimate information, knowledge that we need in order to sustain and to become our best selves. So as you acquire this knowledge and as you sit on it and as you use it in your daily practices, it then becomes wisdom. You are now in the experience of the knowledge. You are now um, fully engaging in that knowledge that was given to you. And then you're developing more knowledge on top of that so that you maybe can help serve, heal, and educate others. All right, guys, so it is extremely important the information that you take in, what are you doing with it? Is it going to be something that's going to deter you off of your path? Or is it going to be something that's going to truly help you gain wisdom? It's going to help you really catapult you into what you're meant to be doing in this lifetime. We talk about that all the time. And you're probably saying, girl, you always talking about what we're supposed to be doing in this lifetime, because that's what this is about. It's about transcending and elevating to who we're meant to be. And in order to do that, you have to acquire proper knowledge and you have to become wise about what's really going on in society, what's really going on in the world in general, and what is it that you want to do so you know what proper steps you need to take to get there. OK, guys, these are wise decisions that we have to make. Now, first of all, we do need to be mindful that all knowledge is not correct. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that all knowledge is not correct. So you got to make sure that you're getting your information from legitimate resources, making sure that the books that you are reading are fulfilling to make sure that what you're ingesting in um, like on a screen it's beneficial. Now, if you're just sitting up, laying around, watching meaningless um, sitcoms, if you're just scrolling on YouTube and watching all these random ass videos that's not really adding any value to your life, it's just bypassing time while you're at work and you're at home, quote unquote, bored. And I did put on my quotation mark fingers for those of you who are watching on YouTube and Spotify and can see this video. Why I put up quotation mark fingers? Because I don't believe there's no there's a such thing as being bored. And that's just my personal opinion. You could shoot the messenger. I don't care. I don't believe there's such thing as being bored because there's always something to do. There's always something going on. There's always something that you could be working on, whether it's personal development, whether that's you working on your spiritual development, whether that's you building up your wealth and getting your money up, whether that's you becoming debt free and becoming financially free, whether that's you serving, healing and educating people through a, a probable cause, whether you can train can, I'm sorry, whether you are contributing to sustainable development goals, whether you're focusing on your physical health, getting your mind, uh, your emotional and mental health together, making sure that you're exercising, making sure you're taking um, positive mental health techniques, making sure that you are balancing your emotions by being mindful of the foods that you take in, the energy that you have surrounded by you, the people pleasing or the lack thereof. So there is plenty that you could be doing in the world. What I am starting to notice now and uh, more and more as time tends to go on or as the years tend to go on is that people are now saying that they don't have enough time to do everything. It's 24 hours in the day and that's just not enough time to do everything that they have on their schedule. So I don't see how people can get bored even if you don't have a job, even if you're not in school, even if you don't pay bills, let's say you're dependent or, you know, you still live at home with your parents or maybe your spouse is solely taking care of you, whatever your situation is, you still have plenty of time throughout the day to not only get through a rest, but to contribute to your health by making sure you're eating proper foods and beverages to get your own knowledge up so you can learn more about who you are as a person, how you can better control yourself. Learning your human design, learning your genius, learning what makes you who you are. There's plenty of time in the day to figure out 
different things that you could be doing that are substantial and valuable to your life that doesn't cause you to be bored. I don't get how people are bored. So not only do you need to take in proper, legitimate knowledge, but you do also have the option to do your own research to decipher what is truly fact. Let's just use a good example. It behooves me when a person of color can learn about a process and they say, oh, that's just doing too much. I'm not about to do all that. Like that's doing too much. That really gets under my skin because A, our, our ancestors did a whole lot. All of our enslaved ancestors did a whole lot of shit that they did not want to do and they were forced to do, but they were not lazy. And it's, it, it kills me when people say black people are so lazy. Modern day, new age, yeah, there's a lot of laziness floating around. It's a lot of entitlement floating around. But guys, we have to think about back in the day, what we learn in school about our history is very whitewashed, is very sugar-coated, pussyfooting a lot around around a lot of major issues that are crucial in our history and our makeup and why we operate the way that we do. But you didn't know about all of that until you start doing your own research because in school, oh, black people just, you know, I'm sorry, Africans just got on a boat and they came over and they built civilization. They made our economy, Hell, they even built the White House. <laughs> you know, they did a lot. And we didn't know about those things until we did our own research. I remember watching the movie Amistad. Amistad came out when I was in, I want to say I was still in elementary school, maybe fourth or fifth grade. I need to look at the year when it came out. But I'm almost positive I was still in elementary school. I had not gotten to middle school yet. And when I watched Amistad, I was so like taken aback. Like, they, they weren't teaching us all this. When you read Roots, but then you actually watch Roots, you're like, wait, they didn't teach me all of this. Then now we fast forward 20, 30 years later, and you were still learning shit that was not taught to us in school. So you cannot just go based off of somebody just gave you some knowledge and then you run with it. You need to do your own research. A lot of the things that's going to actually help us are things that you have to read. You have to connect with. Um, experts in that field. You have to connect with historians that know what they're talking about. You just can't go based off of what is just being told to you. There's more knowledge to everything. A, a subject that I have been researching on that is crazy to me is the Grand Canyon. I um, took a trip to the Grand Canyon. It was November of 2022. Um, my parents took my siblings and I to the Grand Canyon when I was younger. I think I was like three. So, of course, I don't have um, as much memory as I did me being 37 years old going and learning things. And then when I started realizing there was areas you couldn't go to, I'm like, why we can't go to that area? What's going down there? Why can't there's a no fly area, guys? I don't know if you know that about the Grand Canyon. There's certain areas in the Grand Canyon that planes are not allowed to fly over. There's certain areas that drones can't go into. So that started raising a flag like, oh, why can't planes fly? Why can't drones go see what's going on? Because y'all hiding something. And there's shit about our history that's associated with the Grand Canyon that American government does not want us to know about. So then I started doing research. It made me like want to know more. And of course, as I started researching, the algorithm of, on IG, of course, starts throwing things my way of people that's posted up videos that they've done research on. I start going into history books. I start going into case studies. I start looking at um, like individuals that are going for like their PhD and their doctorate and they had to did a, do a dissertation on something. I went to those type of lengths to get research. Then I started discovering that there were slaves and then that there was actual um, hieroglyphics, a lot of hieroglyphics. Then I started discovering about the dead bodies that they found, that they were proven to be African descent. 100% African descent. Then I started finding out about, let's go to when the world first was one big piece of land. And we're going to go back even further to where Africa 
was not even Africa, where Africa was like the predominant land. Because why? Because we are the origin, guys. Remember, we are the one um, species walking this earth that could produce any other ethnicity. And I'm referring to black women. We're the only can produce any ethnicity, any hair color, any eye color. Okay. Let that sit. Mm -hmm. Adubaculon. Look that up. That is the original Africa. All right, guys. When you look into that, so when we're going back to like Pangea days, and some of you might be like, Pangea, yeah, we learned about that shit in school. It was a great school. You probably haven't thought about it since then. But back in the Pangea days, when all the land was put together, if you look at the map, where the Grand Canyon is, it was associated and attached to a part of Africa. So supposedly, many historians and philosophers have written and studied about the water because i don't know if you guys know you can go camping at the grand canyon like you can go down to where the water is there's a little beach down there you can go yeah people don't know about these things you can go down there and what they're trying to say is that stream of water is somehow connected to the nile yes the nile in africa so when you look back at pangea and the way that everything was shaped before stuff started breaking up people had the opportunity to travel from Africa through the Nile all the way to the Grand Canyon. You're like, well, how does that happen now based off of where the map is? Well, when all the land was put together and before there was the Atlantic Ocean separating the United States and Africa, there's, if you look at this, I'm telling you guys, there's research that you can go see this on. If you look at the map, the Nile went like over a piece of land that kind of connected over through New York. And then it comes down like through the Mississippi and then it travels on to where the Grand Canyon is now located at. So things like that. You probably never even heard of this until today. But guess what? That's what I mean about knowledge and knowing in doing your own research when you do hear something that might seem like a conspiracy theory or people say that's not true that's just rumor go look the shit up yourself and once you get real details on things and once you start noticing that those details are really really hard to find that's normally when it's the truth just a little nugget so how you can you do that research do, through literature there's plenty of literature that's explaining things that you really want to know truths to all right. So real experts in the industry are another great resource to go to if they're specialized in that industry. If there's a subject that has shown consistent proven success and progression, these are things that we want to hone in on when we are wanting to acquire our knowledge and develop that into actual wisdom. All right, guys, you even want to be mindful of those that have information that outlines failures and how to mitigate risk because there's no such thing as perfection you don't have a scientist that just wakes up one day and say hey i have a hypothesis and for you those of you who don't remember a hypothesis is an educated guess but i have a hypothesis that x plus y equals z so now i need to go test this theory to me i love those type of people because you can't just test a theory and then you just automatically just Bam, it happens, you know, it just mysteriously works out in your favor. You typically have to test things over and over, trial and error to figure out what is the end game? What is the real resolution? How can we really resolve this problem? How can we bring real um, validity to this hypothesis? So I love when I see that people have tested theories that did not work. They figured out how they can mitigate those risks and they keep going until they figure it out. And then once they figure it out, they put that information out there. Those are the type of case studies. Those are the type of research. Those are the type of literature that I personally like to dive into because it is giving me step for step of what they went through to figure out what works, what doesn't work and what's the real tea. All right. So once you are aware of new knowledge, how are you utilizing it? I have discovered that when I have been speaking at events or once somebody gets to know me and figure out like what my history is in and what my experience in and what I'm specialized in, then they want to say, oh, my God, you reversed 10 ill. You got rid of bipolar disorder. You got rid of diabetes. You don't cramp no more on your menstrual cycle. How did you do that? I tell them they're like, oh, no. Ooh, that's hard. I can't do that. Mm -mm, that's doing too much. 
That is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes from us. And when I say us, people of color, why shit got to be so hard? Why do you have to minimize your power and your ability to do something? When the knowledge is given to you, when a messenger is given to you, when God sends you the information that you need in order for you to succeed in life, stop brushing it off to the side and ignoring it. But instead, take that opportunity to utilize that knowledge. Even if somebody gives you bad knowledge, knowledge that, that that is not true and doesn't make sense, you can still go research it for yourself to see, does it make sense? Does it work? Nah, that theory may not work. But in the process of researching, you are going to, I guarantee you, it never fails. God is going to place it on your heart, the information that you really need to move forward. And even though it might not happen in the time that you want it to happen, don't give up because it will come to you. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And if you're really sincere about acquiring knowledge and if you're really sincere in enhancing your wisdom, you will take time and be patient with yourself to learn what you need to learn to make yourself better. It's simple as that. You have time to think about what you're going to do, what nail color you're going to get so your nails are popping. You have time to think about what eyelashes you're going to put on because which ones are going to make you more appealing. You have time to think about what color you're going to dye your hair because you want to have a new, a new summer color. You have time to pick out the shoes that you want because you want to bang an outfit. You got time to pick out where you want to travel to to go spend your money at to just go turn up and drink all weekend and not really gain any type of real substantial evidence for your life. <laughs> but you can't take time and patience to determine real knowledge that's going to be applicable for you. Just think about that. How are you utilizing the knowledge that you are getting? I have so many clients in the past, both on the health and wellness side and on the entrepreneur side that have made me realize that why I'm not doing consulting no more. I'm going to be, this is going to be a 100% raw, raw, raw confession right now. I am no longer doing business consulting because the knowledge that I was giving that I know is applicable that not only worked for me, but worked for my clients that actually used it and worked for my mentors, the elders before me and the people that I am meeting in my network that is currently working for them. And I'm not talking about people that are making consistent revenue of like a thousand a month here and there. I'm talking about millionaires, billionaires, people with established businesses, people that have the opportunity to go buy other businesses, people that have the opportunity to just go up and move to another country because they have the resources, the wealth, the freedom to do so. I'm talking about people that are on that level. I'm giving knowledge and real life experience. And I see that people are not taking it. They're still wanting to do what the fuck they want to do. And then I'm sitting here and here it is years later and I'm watching their progress and I'm seeing that the progress is not going anywhere. And I'm seeing where they're stagnant at and I'm seeing where the advice that they did, that they did not want to take, how they're not able to go to their next level because they did not take the knowledge and apply it to wisdom. And that's not me shitting on anybody. That's not me putting anybody down. It's just the real life statistics <laughs> of what has transpired and what I have noticed. And let's take it a step further. Even not talking about past clients on the health and wellness side or the entrepreneur side. I'm even taking it to my students that I used to teach. Back when I was a biology professor, some of these students did not want to take knowledge. They're coming to my class. And if they were not a, because um, my actual class that I taught was nutrition diet therapy. My class was a part of the degree program for uh, pre-med students and for nurses. But you could also take my class as an elective. So 90% of my classes were my pre-med and my nursing students, but the other 10% were people using it as an elective. And a lot of them, they use it as an elective was either A, they had health issues that they were wanting to discover what they could do better, or they were caring for a parent, a spouse, or a sibling, or a family member that had serious health issues that they were wanting to help take care of. But then... You will get all of this knowledge. You pay to go to class. You pay to get a degree and you get all this knowledge and you're still not using it. So with that being said, 
once you are aware of new knowledge, I'm going to ask again, how are you utilizing it? Is it that you hear it and you're like, oh, I'll get to it one day. But when you look up one day, it's 10 years later, 20 years later. I'm even looking at clients when I first started offering nutrition consulting, when I had started reversing all of my diseases. And this is like five years ago. I'm even looking at clients that came to me then and was just like, oh, Brittany, it's just so hard to do, you know, and at that point, I was still a chef. They were like, Chef B, oh my God, it's just, I don't know if I could do this. And then I see them five years later and I see the amount of weight that they've gained. I see the different diseases that they have. I see them bitching and complaining about their emotions are all over the place. They're so frustrated. They're so stressed. They have all these things going on. And I'm just like, you're still, your, your resolution is still the same. You're just choosing not to do it because you don't want to do it. You don't want to utilize the knowledge that's being given to you. So with me saying that, be mindful of the knowledge that comes to you, whether good or bad, because you could take a blessing and a lesson from anything that's brought to you. You just got to be open to it and you actually have to act on it. You have to act on it. All right. Um, it's been sad to me, too, to see some clients that fell off and just stopped uh, contacting me or not doing anything. And now I see that they have cancer or they have fibroids, or they have endometriosis, or they're now diagnosed with diabetes, or now they've had a baby since then, and their baby has a learning disability or an issue that's going on that's not beneficial for their overall growth. And these are things, again, that could have been resolved and could have been prevented if you had just taken the knowledge that was properly given to you. Okay, guys? So be mindful that you can acquire valuable knowledge from any walk of life. So be careful of looking down on others or being afraid to approach someone that you feel is above your level. It's funny that I mentioned this exactly because in the book club that I host, shout out to Analog Dope in Las Vegas. I host a book club on the last Saturday of each month at the only black bookstore in Las Vegas, which is the Analog Dope Store, but we also have it to where you can sign online. It is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the last Saturday of each month. But last month for National Poetry Month in April, I'm sorry, two months ago in April, we read Homegirls and Hand Grenades by Sonia Sanchez. She has a, a short story in here about a younger black woman that was at the park and she was kind of frustrated. She didn't know what she was doing. Like she was just kind of all over the place and she was just trying to take a breather, right? And an older lady walked up to her and started talking and she was not feeling the lady. She was like, like, why the hell is this woman walking up to me? And the woman kept talking and kept talking. But then the woman started dropping really good knowledge about love and being open to love and not giving up on love. And once you are fully healed yourself and a healing process, you gotta remember guys, it's, it's ever evolving. You're always consistently healing from something. But when you've gotten through really great um, strides with healing from your like traumatic issues that happened like in your childhood or in past relationships, then she was explaining about being open to love and how when it comes, it comes when it bursts and it's so beautiful. And the woman, the younger woman finally starts listening to her. Then she gets to the point that she wants to know more and just things like that. A person can walk by you. You can frown upon them by the way that they're dressed, the way that they look, the way that they talk. And that person can sit down and give you ample amount of knowledge. It has happened to me so many times, so many times. I will even give an example. I was in Henderson, Nevada, and I was stopping to get gas and it's cold as hell outside. This is like in February, March, and it was still kind of cool in March in uh, Nevada. And it's cold. It had been raining earlier that day. So I'm trying to get in and out. I'm trying to like pump my gas and go. And this woman walked up to me and she looked disgruntled. She gave me like, I'm not trying to be funny. She gave me like um, the witch from uh, Snow White. Like she was just really looked very worn down, looked very tired. She looked like she had an attitude on her face. You know, she looked like she didn't been through some things. So when she first walked up to me, I'm thinking she's come to ask me for money. So I'm kind of ignoring her. I'm trying to go on about my business because I need to get home. I had stuff I needed to do. I had been running errands all day. I'm cold. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Like 
I got shit to do, right? And the woman's deadly trying to talk to me and I was ignoring her. Like I wasn't really checking for her. And I was wrong for that. I can admit I was definitely wrong for that. And then at the end of the conversation, she just handed me this sheet of paper and this little envelope. And I'm like, whatever, I just take it, put it in my car, go on, went to finish pumping my gas because she stopped me as I'm trying to like put my card in and take the pump and put it into my car, right? So I did a pain doing everything, get home. And I was like, what is this that she gave me? I opened it and she gave me a gas card. She gave me a gas card to have 30 cents off, uh, 30 cents off, um, I'm sorry, up to 30 cents off for the gallon for the next three months. And I'm like, well, damn, I just filled up my car and paid this much money. I could have used this and got the dis discount at that point. And then I could use this for the next three months. And in my head, I just felt so convicted. I'm like, oh shit, I was rude to her. She's in here trying to help me. She giving me free coins. She giving me a way for me to save money. She was putting me on to knowledge. Like, hey, you could do this and then you can extend. Like it had like, um, like how they do this, um, this program at this specific gas station that every few months they're doing like this campaign. And if you participate in it, you can keep getting percentage on, or I'm sorry, cents off per gallon. And I'm just like... Damn, she was really trying to help me out. She was trying to get me to save money. She was giving me an outlet that coming into these hot summer months where the gas goes from three something a gallon to five something a gallon. She was trying to put me on game so I could save money, you know, and then letting me know, like, keep your head, like, keep your eyes open because every few months we're going to be doing this. And what's so crazy is not even two weeks ago, I went to the very exact gas station and they were doing the campaign again. So now I got the, ga the gas card for the next three months to get me through summer and just something simple like that. Just simple knowledge. It's about economy. And she was just trying to help me. And there I am being mean as hell, rude as hell, because I was in my own bubble about what I had going on. And I just assumed she was somebody coming to beg for money, but really she was like a contractor that was hired to come outsource and push a campaign, a marketing campaign. So just things like that. You have to be mindful that somebody can walk up to you and somebody can can bring you some very valuable information that you're just not checking for at first just by their appearance or what they look like or whatever even mood you could be in. So we have to be mindful because being afraid also to approach someone that you feel is above your level is kind of the same way. If you're looking down on somebody like, oh, I don't want to talk to them because of whatever reason, you could also have that fear in your head that you don't want to approach somebody because you feel like they're out of your caliber or they're above your level. The worst that somebody could do is tell you no. The worst they could do is say, I can't help you at this time. So you don't want to pass up the opportunity if it's there to approach somebody that can really help you or give you one gem that can really stick with you. I have met plenty of people in my past that I've only met them one time, but it's certain things that stuck in that conversation that still stick to me that, to this day that makes me the woman that I am today, that makes me the entrepreneur that I am today, that makes me the health advocate that I am for today. Like, you got to be mindful of these things, guys. You also want to pay attention to the signs. I just said that. Pay attention to the signs and what type of knowledge is brought to you. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. I remember when I first met my mentor, it was June 2020. I remember this day like nothing. I had just stopped drinking. It was like right after that. And I was just so irritable and I'm going through withdrawals. You know, I'm giving up alcoholism. COVID was beaming then. I'm stressed out at work. I'm stressed out because uh, at that point I'm working at a fintech company. I'm working as a professor as well. I'm a COO of a nonprofit. I'm married. I still have domestication. Like it was a lot going on at that time. And I remember him dropping one sentence, one sentence that had to do with where I was wanting to go in my career. And when he first said it, I was like, what was the, what was the point of saying this shit? Shout out to Derek Moultrie of the Black Equity Network. And now I find myself going back to that statement and building my projects and building my visions off of that one statement. It didn't make sense to me at that point, but I've elevated so much since then. In three years, 
I can definitely say I've gone up a few notches. It's definitely not no 3D over here. It's definitely some 5D. You know, if I can get to 6D, that would be even better. <laughs> but again, that might be something that you might not even know about. You're like 5D, 3D, what, what's, what's that? Research. Go do your research. Find out what a 3D world is, a 4D world, a 5D world, 6D world. Find out what it means to be a high frequency thinker and a high vibrational thinker. Find out what it means to be on certain frequency levels, hearing sounds at certain frequency levels and how that can catapult you into a 5D and 6D life. Again, knowledge you probably never heard of, but then I just gave you a gem that you can go research for your own and figure out where you at. Are you 3D? Are you 4D? Are you 5D? Are you 6D? Are you low vibrational? Are you high vibrational? Hmm? Are you working on evolving or are you just thinking that you want to evolve because that's what everybody else around you is doing? So you're just falling in on the bandwagon. Everything happens for a reason, guys. So be mindful of the signs that are brought to you. I'm really into numerology. You see, I have crystals on. Like it's a lot of things that I pay attention to when it comes to like metaphysical methods. Um, but I'm that person that is a firm believer of a sign. I'm going to even do an example for you that recently happened. Um... I have a partner that I was with in high school that died. And when that person passed away, that person comes back to me frequently in my dreams over the years. This person has been gone now for, it's been over 10 years now that that person passed away. And that person only comes to me in my dreams when something bad is about to happen. It's normally a bad thing is about to happen. It's a death in the family. Like it's something major that happens. It's the only time this person comes to me in my dreams. And when they came to me in my dreams, they could not tell me what was going on. And I was like, why are you in my dreams? Because I haven't dreamt about you in forever, right? The next day I'm driving in the car. My spouse is in the car with me. And this person used to go by T Ross. So we're driving. I mean, I'm on the freeway. Hitting my 80, 85. Yep, that's what I like to drive. I'm going 80, 85. You know, 85 was the year I was born in. So I feel like my foot just naturally goes to that, <laughs> that miles per hour. But I'm going 80, 85, cruising me and my partner talking in the car. And a car passes me. And they have a personalized license plate that says T Ross 88. And I was like, huh? And then I looked to the car to the left of me because I'm in like the middle lane. And the car to the left of me passes me up and their license plate, they had their numbers, but the last three di digits on the license plate was 8-8 eight, eight. again. And I'm like, okay, numerology, anytime I see something, doubles, triples, quadruples, angel numbers, okay, what it do, right? I'm like, what does that mean? Guys, when I tell you this is like 1230, no, this is like 1230 coming into one o'clock because it's like lunch hour. Four hours later. My mom texts me and lets me know that my uncle passes away, which is my dad's only brother. And my uncle's birthday is in August. But the year he was born in, when you add those numbers up, it equals eight. So then it was eight, eight. And signs like that, it doesn't have to do with knowledge, what I'm talking about now, but I'm just talking about signs in general. Signs are everywhere. It's always something guiding you and telling you what you should be doing and if you see numbers like that that's another thing that's knowledge maybe you didn't know about angel numbers you maybe you never knew when you see double triple and quadruple numbers that that means something seeing like 11 11 is a major angel number three is a big thing because three is divinity based off of what religion you practice what spirituality you're into or what types of spirituality you're into three is just a divine number across any new religion or spiritual uh, technique. So when you see things like that, go look into them, see what they mean, see how they may be helping you in your life. You might be dealing with something and you don't realize it and you want answers and answers are being given to you and you're not paying attention. Um, one of my favorite childhood movies, one of my favorite rom-coms is Fools Rush In where uh, Selma Hayek is one of her, I think it was her first movie where she had her first major role where she was the star and her character, Isabel, she was into signs. Her grandma taught her that. So throughout the movie, she's talking about signs, signs, signs. And then at the end, the guy, her love interest, starts seeing these signs. And he realizes like, oh my God, this is the woman I'm supposed to be with. So since then, I've been into signs. But then once I tapped into more of my spiritual life and start realizing like this shit is real. The ancestors, the angels, the most high, the universe, whoever that you believe in, 
is always sending you messages and you got to be mindful of those things. And guys, just to wrap it up, apply applicable knowledge to your life to gain wisdom and explore other options that the box that the box that society tries to brainwash you and keep you in. There's so much knowledge outside of the box that the government pushes, that the news pushes, that these broadcasting companies pushes. We have to remember capitalism is real, guys. The government, these major stations, NBCs, ABCs, all of these places, the news channels, the radio, all of these people tie into delivering a certain message to you that keeps you in a box, that keeps you in your phones, that keeps you in your TV, that keeps you in your tablet, that doesn't keep you paying attention to what's going on in the sky because there's always shit going on in the sky. And if you're on the West Coast, you believe me because you see how often they keep the skies covered y'all just saw the viral video and if you haven't seen it go look into it there's a viral video that was in california california guys and in new mexico of spacecraft that was seen from different angles in the city 11 videos went viral showing this spacecraft that was floating in the air. They showed it from different angles. It was like construction workers saw it. It was this one woman driving on the freeway that saw it. It was these kids outside playing that saw it. But guess what? They don't put that on mainstream TV. They don't put it on mainstream TV. Why? Because they don't want you to be scared of what's really going on. You don't think about things as far as there are videos that you can go research about NASA creating clouds back in the 1980s. The video shows this Caucasian guy in these bell bottoms and this really groovy ass orange and brown shirt. And he's making clouds and shoving them into the sky. Why would they be needing, needing to make clouds? What are you trying to cover up? Things like that. Guys, be mindful that there is much more out in the world than what the TV and the government tells you. Stop being closed-minded. Think outside the box. Stop being brainwashed because all that is really going on in the world, the information is out there. But if you're blocked and you're consumed by these things that are not adding value into your life, that are not adding value into your life, then you need to ensure that things are going. All right, guys, so I definitely want to recap for this episode. We talked about the eight frequency of elevation, the fifth one, which is knowledge acquisition. We talked about how you can take knowledge and transform it into wisdom. So let's talk about the news and events that we have going on coming up. So um, we did just do a, an event with the Sober Black Girl Club yesterday, kicking off Pride Month. It was called Queer and Sober. So it was discussing how you could be black, queer, and sober and still sustain in this society. But guess what? Even though you missed that one, Sober Black Girl Club, I'm sorry, Sober Black Girls Club will be having a virtual event on the 30th for their all women's group on that Friday. So keep up with us so you can know what's going on with that. Now, yesterday also marked the one year anniversary of our book, NNG's Formula to Kick Cramps Ass. So we're so excited about the book. And in the last two months, we've talked about it with you guys that we've been able to transform that into actual organizations. And I'm sorry, into an actual organization. And we also have a podcast products and services that we now offer. And so we're so excited about that movement. This Saturday, we are going to be in L.A. at the um, L.A. School of Comedy for the Celebration of Menstruation, a Dignified Menstruation event. And we will be um, facilitating a workshop and be an exclusive vendor there. If you're in Las Vegas, we will be an exclusive vendor at the 22nd annual Las Vegas Juneteenth Festival. So come check us out there. Now, Spoken Black Girl, we're going to be doing a virtual event, an IG Live on June 20th, where we will be talking about NNG's formula to kick cramps ass. And it will be a kickoff to our workshop that we will be having with them as well on June 20th. Fourth, the actual Kick Cramps Ass Workshop, we had an in-person one in Las Vegas on Menstrual Hygiene Day on May 28th, but we will be doing a virtual one through the Spoken Black Girl. Okay, girl, like we're so excited about that. 
so so excited um as you guys know we are a wellness blogger for them so be sure to keep up with their um new collective that they have they have an abundant wellness blog they have a right hill thrive collective that's going to be executing various workshops for women of color as we figure out self-love self-care combating mental health um so we're so excited about that and then also we mentioned earlier the last saturday of each month analog dope the only black bookstore in las vegas we do have a book club called amplified black lit that you can come in person at 6 p.m pacific standard time but we also have virtual options so if you're not in the las vegas area or even if you are and you're unable to come in person you can log on virtually and be a part of our book club all right guys so if you have any questions or concerns in regards to this episode or anything that New Nation Goddess has going on, please reply to this episode on whichever platform you're listening to, and we'll be sure to answer any questions or concerns that you have. Be sure to like our podcast, share it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, because not only do we have our podcast on there, we have other resources that are beneficial for you as well. Major shout out to JG Cicero for the banging ass intro. I have her information in the description. If you want your own personalized branded song for your business an event whatever works for you i want to give a shout out to solar eclipse for all the crystal jewelry that keeps me grounded and keeps me going um as part of my metaphysical methods i'll put their information in the description of the bio with code kca at checkout you will be able to receive a discount and then last but not least i mentioned my soul sister dr ashley wade read for freedom you can connect with her at read with Dr. Ashley Way, but I'll also put her information in the description of our bio. If you have been a listener with us for a while, she was a guest on our podcast last season, season three, episode two, where we talk about defining your purpose. Not only is she a pharmacist, but she has a pharmacy consulting business. She has her own brand with Read with Dr. Wade, where she's helping you become elevated through reading. And she also has a self-discovery book and self-discovery um, services that she could offer for you. So definitely have to check her out. We definitely want to send gratitude to all of you for tuning in on this beautiful Wealth and Wellness Wednesday. And guys, we're going to manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful remainder of the day, remainder of the week. And we will be talking to you all soon. Peace. Bye, guys.